FNNC Publishing is blessed to present the first book to dispel the stigma of slave. This is the paradigm shift we have been waiting for. We are freeing ourselves in the past from the present. We are either part of the solution or part of the problem. When people ask me how many children do I have, I say all of them. May we honor our ancestors in truth and spirit. I thank my ancestors. I thank my ancestors for the here and now. I know I could not be here without them. I thank my parents who are related to my ancestors. I know they have done the best that they know how. Even though it may seem like I am in hell, my ancestors have provided a sanctuary for me and those like me. They have proven that they love me more than I love myself. Contents for why we shouldn't call our ancestors slaves, part one. Introduction. As a man thinketh, the formula, all are affected, the first time, the principles and issues, the principles of thought, the law of attraction, where they come from, living things, a symbiotic relationship, the purpose of thought, the science of thought, good thoughts, bad thoughts. Why we believe our ancestors were slaves, the reverse psychology, and being free. Introduction As a Man Thinketh by James Allen Quote, The aphorism, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, not only embraces the whole of a man's being, but is so comprehensive as to reach out to every condition and circumstance of his life. A man is literally what he thinks, his character being the complete sum of all his thoughts. As the plant springs from and could not be without the seed, so every act of a man springs from the hidden seeds of thought and could not have appeared without them. This applies equally to those acts called spontaneous and unpremeditated as to those which are deliberately executed." Unquote. The formula, therefore, is that common beliefs and thoughts produce common actions that produce common results in a common environment every time. And one of the most damaging beliefs that black American African people have about ourselves is that we are the descendant of a people who were slaves to white people. In the end. All that any of us want to do is to live and enjoy life. If we have children, we want to see them do the same thing. Sometimes we automatically feel good when we can help other people. According to our expressions through music, art, and writing, it seems that most of us are living in hell on earth instead of heaven on earth. If you judge a tree by the fruit it produces, it does not look like the black American African people are a happy people. And, according to statistics and what we can see, it shows in every area of our society. The question is, do black people need self-help books specifically written for the American African? One of the reasons why most self-help books fail black people is that they do not get to the root of the problem. They do not take our history, our environment, and our situation as a people into consideration. They analyze and diagnose our problems as if the effects of slavery have dissipated. However, the fact is that many of the changes that were imposed on us as a people during slavery are still with us to this day. They think and act as if black people's problems and white people's problems are the same and work the same way because we are all human beings. Although there are similarities, there are also differences. There are differences in our genetics, our spirituality, and our histories. Therefore, the dynamics of our problems are not the same as they are for white people. One difference is obvious. 
when you look at the problems in American society, in every area, we suffer more. The foster care system is full of our children. Heinous and nonsensical crimes, shootings, and homicide rates are epidemic in black communities across America. We see high rates of alcohol, drug, and sexual abuse. And although it is not considered to be a crime, the most devastating problem that black people face is in the division that exists in our families. In fact, there is so much division in our families and communities that we now see it as being normal. One parent cannot do what two parents can do. Two parents cannot do what an extended family can do. When grandpa and grandma are not present, much knowledge and wisdom is lost. The breakup and dysfunction of our families tends to stunt the mental and spiritual growth of our children and prevents them from being competitive with others who come from healthy, functional families. These problems are not restricted to poor black people. As adults, one way or another, the vast majority of us are caught up in the battle for self-control. Too many of us are in self-destruct mode and not understanding why. The aim of this book is to help improve the quality of life for black people by providing information that will help improve the way we see ourselves, which will automatically influence the way we act towards each other. Ever since we were brought here to be slaves, which was not that long ago, the status and mental condition of black people have always been in question, even by black people. Therefore, in the introduction of Tom Burrell's book, Brainwash, he asks, So then why, after all this time, when calculating the achievement of the American dream, are we still ranked at the bottom of almost every good list and at the top of the bad list? Why, despite our apparent strength, intelligence, and resourcefulness, do we continue to lag behind and languish in so many aspects of American life? The subtitle of his book is Challenging the Myth of Black Inferiority, and that is exactly what this book is doing as well. All myths about black inferiority are rooted in the idea that our ancestors were slaves to the Europeans and that we lived like savages in Africa before we were brought here. If a person was kidnapped at a young age and put in an environment where everyone, including the church, the school, and the news media told them that they were inferior, after a time they would begin to believe it. The belief that black people are inferior is the legacy of slavery. We may not admit it openly, but many of us believe it. The proof shows in our standards of beauty, our words, and our actions as a people. If we look closely at the pandemic problems that exist among us as a people, it would not be difficult to see that these problems are related to self-esteem issues. They are directly related to how we view and value ourselves as a people. Some of us have even been convinced that something is intrinsically wrong with black people. They believe that we are inferior by nature or God's will and that slavery took us out of savagery. They also believe that European culture and religion are universally correct. They reject their African identity and culture. Therefore, the only reason they call themselves black or American African is because they have no choice. Believing that our ancestors were slaves has an effect on our perception of who we are and what we do. If we believe our ancestors were slaves, then we must also believe that we are the descendants of slaves. And in believing so, we will act accordingly. One major theme of this book is that we act according to what we think we are. I am not saying that slavery did not exist. I am saying that the word slave does not and should not be applied to the ancestors of black American Africans or any black people. Some people believe that if we did not call them slaves, it would diminish our understanding of slavery and its impact. In truth, our understanding of our history is further diminished by calling our ancestors slaves because it tends to move us to not look at our history. 
It prompts us to avoid studying our history from our point of view. What is the difference between a prisoner, a hostage, a captive, and a slave? Many books, movies, and documentaries have been made and are still being made about the physical aspects of slavery. Slavery is probably one of the most studied subjects in American history. In addition, slavery and colonialism have had the greatest influence on African people in modern times. Therefore, it deserves our attention. However, the more we look at the effect of calling and believing that our ancestors were slaves, the more we will see the importance of this issue. Although some of us have rejected the idea that our ancestors were slaves, understanding the reasons and the effects of calling them slaves needs to be explored. Does calling our ancestors slaves have an effect on our self-concept? Does it affect our ability to think clearly and logically? Does it affect our ability to prosper in an environment that has a long history of oppressing black people? Every self-help book ever written, including the Bible, tells us that there is a direct relationship between our thoughts, beliefs, actions, and the results we get. Therefore, how do our beliefs about our origins, our ancestry, and our history affect us? Many social programs, books, and speeches have sought to raise the consciousness and quality of life for black people. Still, the disparity widens because we have not gotten to the root of the problem. The success rates of these programs would be much higher if we had a more positive understanding of where we came from, our true spirit and nature, and our situation. This is true because we act on what we see, and what we see is influenced, filtered, and colored by what we believe about ourselves. And our beliefs about our identity are central to what we do and the results we get. There is a connection between what a person thinks or does not think about their race and what they think about their self as a member of that race or group of people. In examining the problems that plague black communities across this country, we can see that the majority of our problems are related to our self-concept, our ego, and our self-esteem, which is rooted in our beliefs and perceptions of black people. All are affected. All black people, rich and poor, are in the same American boat. Calling our ancestors slaves affects the esteem of all black people because it speaks about the quality of our nature by the way of the people from whom we descended. Money does not heal these problems. In some cases, money may even make them worse because of what people must go through to get the money. Money also gives people more power to act on the negative thoughts that possessed them. The belief that our ancestors were slaves was implanted in all of us at an early age, and because it relates to the people from whom we descended, it is impossible for this belief to not have an effect on all black American Africans. From the black American African activists to those who are well educated in African culture and customs, to those who know nothing about African or American African history. All have been affected by the belief that our ancestors were slaves. If you believe it, you are directly affected. If you do not believe it, you are indirectly affected by the people you know that do believe it. If it has an effect on our children, it has an effect on us. Therefore, there are no black people who have not been affected by the belief that their ancestors were slaves. All of us know that there is nothing good or positive about being a slave or being called a slave, especially in the context of American and European history. Many of us think that we must accept this belief because it is true. Therefore, it is important that we examine the truthfulness and the effects of calling our ancestors slaves. The word slave is a negative word. If we apply it to our ancestors, the people from whom we descended, we also apply it to ourselves. The first time. Imagine how our children feel 
when they are bused into schools where they are the minority. Imagine them sitting in a classroom and being one of two or three black children out of 20 or more white children in the class. Then imagine how they feel when they began to learn about American history. American history is full of examples of how Europeans came to America, conquered the land and the people, and overcame all types of adversity. They give credit for their triumphs to their spirit as a people. At the same time, our children are taught that the black African people were slaves to the Euro-American people. At that point, what could possibly be going through our children's minds? In the late 1950s, when I was very young, I used to get up every Saturday morning to watch Tarzan on TV. That was about the only time black people could be seen on television. I tried to look behind Tarzan to see what the Africans were doing because they looked like me. However, they were too far in the background and all I could get was a glimpse. Still, every Saturday, I hoped I would get a chance to learn a little more about black people and my heritage. In those days, one of the worst things a person could call you was a black dog. The word black was more painful than the word dog. At the same time, if you told someone to do something that they did not want to do, they would respond with, I ain't your slave. Being a slave was considered to be as bad as or worse than being a black dog. In the mid-1960s, black people were starved for positive social and cultural recognition, and we still are to this day. That is why I got excited when I learned that we were going to learn about black people's history in our social studies period. I was ready to learn. Then the first thing the teacher showed us in the book was that black people were slaves to white people. I was disappointed again. Being dark-skinned was bad enough, and being the descendant of slaves seemed like a double blow to me. Do you remember how you felt the first time you learned you were a descendant of slaves? What did you think? If you did not feel anything, it had to be because you had already been numbed by the system. Today, our children are much more aware of things than we were at their age. What are they learning about their history, their ancestors, and who they are? What are they thinking? Do they even care? Today, the propaganda machine is even more pervasive and effective in miseducating us about us and projecting negative images of black people. The messages are subtle and subliminal. Almost every black American African activist recognizes that the images being projected today are only updated versions of those projected during slavery and the Jim Crow era. If we accept these negative images as true, we will act accordingly making what we believe come true, then they become self-fulfilling beliefs. As a result, believing these negative images helps to support our disproportionate suffering in the land of plenty. Because we have been bombarded with information that says our ancestors were slaves, it is not enough just to say that our ancestors were not slaves. We must understand the logic and the effect that the word slave has on the psyche of black people. Our children must know that their ancestors were not slaves and that they are not the descendants of slaves. No healing can take place until the illness is acknowledged and understood. Principles and Issues What is in a name? Does the belief that our ancestors were slaves have an effect on our identity and self-concept? Exactly what do we mean when we call our ancestors slaves? If names have no meaning or effect, then what difference does it make what we call our ancestors or ourselves? If it does not matter, then why insist on calling them slaves? I think that most people believe that the names we apply to ourselves are very important. Therefore, one of the biggest debates in the black community is over the use of the N-word. The fact that we call it the N-word 
and the debate itself implies the importance of the names we use to identify ourselves as individuals and as a people. Everything we do is a product of thought. All of our feelings are the product of thought. Since this book is about correcting the error of calling the ancestors of black American African slaves, it is necessary for us to examine some basic laws of how thoughts and beliefs work and where they come from. Then we can apply these principles to help us understand why we shouldn't call our ancestors slaves, and that calling them slaves has a negative effect on how other people view black people and how black people view black people. Just like everything else in the universe and the world, our thoughts and beliefs work according to universal laws and order. The same laws that govern cause and effect also govern thoughts and beliefs. Universal laws do not change and cannot be changed. Under specific conditions, they will produce specific results every time. Some of these laws are, from nothing nothing comes, this law can be viewed from different angles such as, you cannot get something from nothing, you cannot turn something into nothing, and from like like comes. The law of opposites, everything other than God has an opposite, everything has a positive and a negative side. The law of vibration, everything in the universe vibrates and has its own distinct vibration. The law of cause and effect, E equals MC squared. Everything has a cause and an effect. When things, physical and non-physical, come into contact with each other, they have an effect on each other. The law of attraction. A brief study of the law of attraction will confirm the following. The law of attraction states, that positive energies will always attract positive energies, while negative energies will always attract negative energies. Things that are alike attract, opposites repel. All of the above laws apply to everything we do every day. They apply to what we do as individuals, as well as to what we do as a people. They apply to what we do in private, and in our social interactions as well. By the law of attraction, we tend to hang around people who are more like us, who think like us, and have similar mental and spiritual needs. Most likely, these people will have a common culture, heritage, history, and personal experiences. If a thought or belief receives enough energy, it will turn into related actions which will produce results that reinforce the thought or the belief. In this way, we form our own reality inside of reality. When our thoughts and beliefs are not compatible with reality, we suffer. When they are, we grow and prosper. As time goes on, thoughts and beliefs tend to grow stronger unless something proves them to be incorrect or non-functional. When new information is introduced, we say it makes sense if it is compatible with the information we have already accepted as true. If the information does not fit, we say it does not make sense or it is not true. Common thoughts and beliefs will produce common actions under similar circumstances. In turn, common actions will produce common results in a common environment. And this is what we are seeing in black American African communities all across this country. At an early age, we learned that being a slave to anything was bad. In the history class, we learned that while the oppressors were saying, give me liberty or give me death, we were accepting slavery without much resistance. This type of education strongly suggests inferiority of nature and spirit. If we believe our ancestors were slaves in slavery, we will be more likely to attract and accept related and similar beliefs about them. And being their descendants, we will be inclined to accept related negative thoughts about ourselves 
as individuals and as a people, even if we are not aware of the process. On a collective level, this belief is even more influential. Where they come from. There are only two places that thoughts can come from. They can come from inside and outside, from self and from other than self. Just because a thought is in your mind, it does not necessarily mean that it came from the self. Few individuals can resist the power of the collective or group mind. Culture is the collective mind of the people. Each culture and subculture has its own personality and vibration. Culture includes everything. Religious centers, businesses, schools and colleges, all forms of media, all forms of entertainment and politics, and everything else that exists in our society. Our essence is what we were at the time of our birth, even before. After that, everything else was added on. The individual is born into a family, the family in a community, the community in a city, the city in a state, and the state in a country, etc. All of these are connected by culture. What is the history of American culture? Where did it come from? What are the differences between European and African cultures? American and European are cultures that put Africans in a unique form of human captivity called slavery and have a long history of oppressing black people even to this day. Therefore, when we evaluate our beliefs and values, we must consider their history and their source. Living Things the idea of this book is like a living thing. Over the years it has grown and grown and is still growing. It started out as a column for a community newspaper, grew into a pamphlet, and then into a book. Just as our bodies are made of living cells, our living mind is made of living thoughts and beliefs. They possess the basic qualities of all living things. A brief study of nature demonstrates that life can take on forms that are beyond our imagination. Thoughts are forms of energy. They are brought into reality by other thoughts and beliefs. They need to be supported by other thoughts and beliefs to live. They relate to each other like birds of a feather. They work together to form living belief systems and mindsets. Each individual mind is like an ecosystem containing 100 billion neurons and processes more than 25,000 thoughts per day. A brief study of ecosystems shows how the various life forms relate to each other. The same basic process relates to how our minds work. It is a pattern that repeats itself over and over and permeates all of nature. Just as there are worlds within worlds, there are thoughts inside of thoughts and beliefs inside of beliefs. The process can be compared to an egg or a seed. In time, a seed can grow into a whole tree, an egg into a whole chicken or a human being, depending on what type of egg it is. A Symbiotic Relationship we have an interdependent relationship with our thoughts and beliefs. We see ourselves as being one with them. We can feel that they are a vital part of who we are. If our thoughts and beliefs are threatened, we tend to feel as if we are being attacked. This often leads to arguments and strong negative feelings towards those who do not understand, disagree, or call our ideas and beliefs stupid. An attack on our thoughts and beliefs is an attack on our ego. Sometimes we are willing to fight and even die for what we believe if the feeling is strong enough. Therefore, we tend to cling to what we have already accepted as true and or what the collective mind or culture accepts as true. 
This makes it hard for some of us to accept the idea that we should not call our ancestors slaves. The purpose of thoughts. In nature, birds must learn how to fly. Lions must learn how to hunt. Prey animals must learn how to escape predators. Their learning and their skills must conform to their nature if they are going to continue to exist in their environment. Their nature is directly related to their genetic and social histories. By nature, the ultimate purpose of thoughts, beliefs, knowledge, and learning is to assist that which we were born with, our essence. Therefore, the purpose of learning and knowledge is to assist our spirit in the physical world and possibly the spiritual world as well. Because of the history of Euro-American culture as it relates to the American African, it is necessary for us to educate or re-educate ourselves, particularly in the areas that relate to our history, identity, and spirituality. The thoughts that were implanted in us, about us, under slavery, were meant to benefit the ones that put us in slavery. Therefore, if our thoughts and beliefs are not bringing us the results that benefit us, we must ask, how did we come to accept the beliefs and values that form our current collective state of mind and culture? Who benefits from our pain and suffering? If what you did did not benefit you, then what you did was what someone else wanted you to do. The fact that we call our ancestors slaves and the confusion in the language about the words slave and slavery is testimony to the fact that we have been miseducated about our history and our true identity. The following is a quote from Carter G. Woodson, the father of black history. The same educational process which inspires and stimulates the oppressor with the thought that he is everything and has accomplished everything worthwhile, depresses and crushes at the same time the spark of genius in the Negro by making him feel that his race does not amount to much and never will measure up to the standards of other people. Unquote. Carter G. Woodson, The Miseducation of the Negro, 1933. And this is still true to this day. As we begin and continue to educate ourselves about ourselves, we should leave no stone unturned. We should walk a mile in our ancestors' shoes. We should not accept what they tell us at face value. We should allow the information we have accepted as true and new information to be tested and retested. With the power of the internet and the library, there is no subject that we cannot study. The Science of Thought As thoughts and beliefs function according to universal laws and order, there is a science to it. For the most part, we have been educated in the areas of how to get a good job, in the various areas of technology, but not in the science of life or how to live in a way where we can experience heaven on earth. Therefore, it is necessary for us to educate ourselves to achieve this goal. Achieving this goal is not dependent on money, material possession, or a particular circumstance. It is dependent on understanding the laws mentioned above and understanding how thoughts and beliefs work. Are our thoughts and beliefs producing the results we want? If what you did did not benefit you, then what you did was what someone else wanted you to do. Good Thoughts, Bad Thoughts The process is better illustrated in the lyrics of a song by the Funkadelic, produced by George Clinton, from the album Standing on the Verge of Getting It On. Good Thoughts, Bad Thoughts Travel like a king. Listen to the inner voice. 
a higher wisdom is at work for you. Conquering the stumbling blocks comes easier when the conqueror is in tune with the infinite. Every ending is a new beginning. Life is an endless unfoldment. Change your mind and you change your relation to time. You can find the answer. The solution lies within the problem. The answer is in every question. Dig it. An attitude is all you need to rise and walk away. Inspire yourself. Your life is yours. It fits you like your skin. The oak sleeps in the acorn. The giant sequoia tree sleeps in its tiny seed. The bird waits in the egg. God waits for his unfoldment in man. Fly on, children. Play on. You gravitate to that which you secretly love most. You meet in life the exact reproduction of your own thoughts. There is no chance, coincident, or accident in a world ruled by law and divine order. You rise as high as your dominant aspiration. You descend to the level of your lowest concept of yourself. Free your mind and your ass will follow. The infinite intelligence within you knows the answers. Its nature is to respond to your thoughts. Be careful of the thought seeds you plant in the garden of your mind. For seeds grow after their own kind. Play on, children. Every thought felt as true or allowed to be accepted as true by your conscious mind takes root in your subconscious, blossoms sooner or later into an act, and bears its own fruit. Good thoughts bring forth good fruit. Bullshit thoughts rot your meat. Think right and you can fly. The kingdom of heaven is within. Free your mind and your ass will follow. Play on, children. Sing on, lady. The belief that our ancestors were slaves is a bad seed. If we accept it as true, we can only get bad results from it. Why we believe our ancestors were slaves? Maybe we believe it because we look at our history through the eyes of the people who captured, tortured, and then educated us. Maybe we believe it because almost everyone else believes it. Is it because every time we see a documentary or a movie about slavery, black history, we see black African people submitting to inhumane conditions like slaves? Is it because they say it over and over? The slaves, the slaves, the slaves. They seem to run it in the ground. Maybe we believe it because we have problems dealing with that part of our history. For many of us, the images and thoughts of slavery are very painful because we naturally tend to identify with our ancestors. The pain of it automatically prompts us to avoid looking at and thinking about what we experienced under slavery. By avoiding it, we have not taken a deeper look at the issue. When Alex Haley's miniseries Roots came on TV in the late 1970s, the masses of black people were very eager to learn about black history during slavery. So were white people. We thought we were going to learn the truth about slavery. In addition, we would starve for social recognition as a people. We thought that Roots would be something good for us to watch. The series ran every day for one week. And it seemed that everyone I knew was highly motivated to watch it. Almost every well-known black actor was in it. It was an epic event. When it was over, almost everyone believed that that was the way it was. We had seen enough. Roots and all other movies about slavery have mixed falsehood and truth into one picture. They depict black people in an inferior status to white people. They imply that most of us had accepted our fate and that only a few individuals fought back, if any. Therefore, we believe that our ancestors and foreparents were slaves. But why should we expect those who have a Eurocentric point of view 
to understand or to tell us the truth about the history of Africans in America? Why should we accept what they say at face value without question? The reverse psychology. How many times have we heard that we should be proud of our history? How can we be proud of being slaves? Which is not the same as saying that we can be proud of how we operated under slavery. How can we be proud of being savages and being a backward people in Africa? Relative to the time and environment, African people were no more backward than any other people, even the Europeans living in cities and towns. How can we be proud or even make a good judgment of something of which we have little knowledge? This is a contradiction in logic. If we cannot take pride in being slaves, according to the original definition, how can we take pride in being the descendants of slaves and savages? We tell our children and ourselves to be proud of our history and then treat it as if it began in America under the despotism of the American government. As a result, only a relatively few black people have any interest is studying anything that relates to the origin and cultures of black people. In effect, it is a form of forced self-rejection. Believing that our ancestors were slaves allows us to believe that we are now free, when the opposite may be more correct. If we believe we are free, we will see no need to make an effort to get free. The reverse psychology is that it looks like they are telling us to do one thing, but what is taught prompts us to do the opposite. It looks like we are being encouraged to study our own history. Then it is treated as if it is almost irrelevant by giving us very little of it, and what little we do get is distorted. What we do get does not encourage us to learn more about African people, culture, or history. Our education has not motivated most individuals to do the things that help us to develop our communities and families or to have much hope for the future. Reverse psychology, propaganda, lies, and confusion are relatives of the same family. They are the cornerstone of slavery. Being free. Having rights to do particular things is not the same as being free. Prisoners have rights. Dr. Martin Luther King recognized the fact that we are not free in his 1963 I Have a Dream speech when he said, but 100 years later the Negro still is not free. If we are not free, then what does freedom mean? What would it mean if we were free? Being free means that we are free to be ourselves. In order to be ourselves, we must understand our true identity as a people and as individuals of that people. In order to understand our true identity, we must understand where we came from, our history, and our natural cultures. The truth is that black African people captured under slavery acted no differently than any other people would have under the same conditions. The truth is that slavery was very different from any other form of human servitude before it. The truth is that Africans in America under slavery resisted and forced the government to change the conditions of slavery and to come up with the Emancipation Proclamation. This is the end of part one. Part two is about the definition, meaning, and history of the words slave and slavery. Thank you for listening and watching this video. If you like this video audiobook, please press the like icon and share. See what your friends think. Please subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified when more videos come available. Also, your comments are most welcome.